next portion of the service of the inspirational lecture, we have a speaker here for the first time today, Reverend Steve Harmon. I've known him for quite a while, long before I was ordained or certified. He's, he's, wore, he's wore the test of time a little better than I have, though. <laughs> he's uh, currently uh, living in Auckland, New Zealand, travels to the U.S., and around different parts of the world demonstrating and teaching spirit communication. He's currently uh, residing in Casadega for the next couple of weeks, and I'll announce some of his activities during the announcement portion. But he's been featured on television and radio uh, demonstrating mediumship documented by the Associate Press and other news organizations. He also has a best-selling book that's published last year. He holds credentials as an ordained minister, certified medium teacher. Please welcome Reverend Steve Herman. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, it's so great to be here. I didn't know what to expect. Of course, if I was really psychic, I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> but this is really great. I mean, it's awesome because they actually have music and People here are not like corpses sitting there. <laughs> Sometimes when you go to some place, I mean this in a nice way, but you go in there, everyone's lethargic, and they lip sync to the songs, which isn't good, is it? Because what do you think happens after you leave this physical body? Are you lifeless? I mean, there's some people, literally, they believe this, that once the physical body ceases to function, you know, you bury it, you put it in the ground, of course, if you're cremated, it's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> and miraculously, somehow all the decomposing bits get all put back together, and you start walking around functioning. But what really takes place? We understand that just like we have this physical world, and we're in this temporary physical vehicle, that there's these other dimensions. And Many times, people have this idea that, my gosh, the spirit world or heaven, it's in some far off place. But where is it? It's around us. And who do you think populates that place? All sorts of people. And eventually, if I was really psychic, I could make a prediction. Every single one of you, you're all going to kick the bucket. <laughs> Hopefully not Sunday afternoon today. But we're all going to wind up in the spirit world. So we were just singing this hymn, you know, I want to see God. Who wants to see God here? And who has the eyes to see God? We all have the eyes if we cultivate the vision. Isn't this true? Because the world of the spirits around us, but the power of the spirit, it's within us, isn't it? So if we want to seek God, not that we can't find God outside of ourselves, but ultimately we have to go inside. But what tends to happen when we're in these very dense physical bodies, when I say heavy, it doesn't mean that we're overweight, but it's, it's very heavy here in the physical world. But we go into these other worlds that are non-physical, they're on a subtle or spiritual level. Everything is vibrating at a much higher frequency. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. It's like it's sped up. Who's gone out of their body here? Out of, out of your body. Today? <laughs> you know, you travel in, yes, we have someone sitting here almost comatose, but they're really up above now. We, when we go into this world of the spirit, it's a complete different environment. And in that environment, we have senses that are able to function in that environment. And we can interact with other personalities there. So we're in this physical world, and we have the five physical senses. But you know, your vision here is limited physically, isn't it? And as we age, our vision might need really thick glasses, or we need a hearing aid because the hearing isn't acute. And we know that many other types of physical bodies, for example, a dog, they can hear sounds that you can't hear. They can smell things you wouldn't want to smell. <laughs> so this body's limited, and yet when we're here, we identify it with it, don't we? And we think falsely in a lot of cases that this is it. I mean, it's interesting because I work as a medium professionally. I remember when this, your pastor, he was a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you get these people coming to you for a session 
and we have different types of communicators or personalities from spirit and you know if you had an uncle who was neurotic do you think he's going to change his neurosis after he goes over there no. probably not yeah. you know you have someone who had certain dysfunctions or they're uptight about certain things they go to the spirit world they take all that baggage with them the 50 years of psychotherapy that they neglected to get what happens well we know that the therapists there they have their hands full don't they <laughs> But you get these people coming in from spirit, and when they were here, they did not believe in anything. I mean, literally atheistic. Who's an atheist here? Brave enough to raise your hand, I'm just joking. But no, we have some people like this. What do they think life is? It's a bunch of chemicals that somehow randomly have been put together. Now I'll tell you this, you can believe that, you can have three PhDs, which is a wonderful thing, but when you pass into the world of the spirit. It doesn't matter what you believe. And if you have these ideas, you're in for a rude awakening. It's the spirit world. They want to make us aware of who we are. Because when we see God within ourselves, when we start to connect with the higher consciousness, we learn to love and appreciate all of the other children of God around us. You know, we can look at someone and we can see the dirt in fact, what's really even very, very sad is so many people, and I see this all the time with the healing and the mediumship, people, they look in the mirror, they look at themselves, and they emphasize all the defects. Now, I'll tell you, every single one of us on some level here in this material world, we make major types of mistakes, don't we? And if we're really starting to get in touch with things, hopefully we're going to learn from it the air. But your loved ones in the world of the spirit, the angel guardians, they're completely aware of who you are, sometimes more than you are, unfortunately. So this is why we need to put as much emphasis as possible in working on ourselves while we're here. You know, we talk about the gifts of the spirit, you know, the mediumship, all these wonderful different avenues in which we can experience the spirit world directly. You know, because you can read it in a book you could have some clergy person spouse theology or different types of spiritual philosophies, but a lot of that, it, in a practical level, it's very hard to translate. And you can imagine, you can be a clergy person and you're counseling someone who's bereaved, and you might not, within your consciousness, even have absolute conviction of the reality of life after death. So your loved ones and others who've been here, you know, they, they've gone through their life, and then they go to the world of the spirit and they just see how bogged down they really were. You know, we have these bodies. And within our lives here in this physical world, we end up focusing so much on that which is impermanent and temporary. Isn't this right? I mean, it's like putting all our money in the wrong bank account because you can't take it with us, can we? And even, even when we talk about the development of mediumship, people will think, my gosh, I'm going to be clairvoyant. I'm going to entertain people. <laughs> you know, I might make some extra money. I'm going to levitate the ceiling. It's going to amuse people at cocktail parties. All these things. I'll be the total center of attention. But developing clairvoyance, or being able to see with your spiritual vision, so to speak, does not necessarily mean you've developed your personal characters or your morals, does it? You know, so sometimes you get sidetracked. I want to tip the table, and you know, maybe Cleopatra will come through to me, or some biblical personality. This is what people think. So, with mediumship, this is very good because when we start to experiment with communication with these other dimensions, it proves to us beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's something to this. But once we start to awaken, once we start to gain some type of greater awareness of the reality of things. What's going to happen is, and most importantly, the higher personalities in the spirit world, the teachers who direct us and try to influence people, they want to make us aware of who we are. And most importantly, getting in touch with God within our hearts. Because when we start to get in touch with that inner, greater consciousness that we're all connected with, you know, we're, we're, we're minute, but qualitatively, every single one of us, 
has the same type of potency as God. Quantitatively, maybe not. You know, we're not God. We're not the whole. But if we want to know God, we have to know ourselves. So sometimes we, you know, we, we have some, I remember one time I had this lady come, and this was actually in the UK, North London. She came to me for a session. She must have been in her mid-80s. And I'm, all oh, this extremely loving, wonderfully constructive, intelligent information was coming to me, encouraging her. And she's there. No, 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 that can't be. I'm old and decrepit. My body's going to fall apart. And I know that this is true because that's what a medium told me. Now, I'll tell you this. If you believe this, right? So think of the man, that's what we become. Isn't this right? That's right. You know, we focus on the faults. What is, happens? We stay mentally in a hole, and we're not able to necessarily get out. And, of course, with what we think, where we direct our energy, we, we, we create the situation. We allow, we should say, we allow the situation to be a certain way. Now, I'll tell you, we have our challenges, don't we? We have personal difficulties and, and, and areas that we need to improve upon. But your people in spirit, the higher guardians, even though they might see what needs to be done, just like if you're a teacher, you might have a student who's really messing up quite a bit. Your position as a teacher is to lovingly direct that student to a better place. That's your responsibility. But of course, as students here in this physical world, we know that it's our responsibility. You know, we want to be aware of what our faults are, because if we know what our faults are, we can overcome. And the Spirit will provide the resources. They will provide the encouragement and the healing light to be able to do this. But if we're so bogged down in our thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so horrible, everything is bad, the tsunami is going to hit Daytona Beach at 1 o'clock, <laughs> will I make it home in time, you know? A half hour drive from here. This is what people think. Now that doesn't mean that that won't happen, but it's how we respond to those situations. You know, we are our sisters and our brother's keepers, and we all have God there within our hearts, the Christ consciousness the divine light, the higher supreme dwells within. And when we get in touch with the power of the Spirit, just like what Jesus, the Master, taught, greater things than I you can do. Isn't this right? Who doubts this? But that doesn't mean you're just going to sit in a room and tip the table. It means you have to go out in your own physical life and demonstrate that power to other people. Not because you want to impress them, because you are concerned about their well-being. You know, someone may be a real, being a real jerk to you, but we have to practice charity toward that person, not giving them money, but loving them despite the negation that might be there, you know, the error of their thinking or their actions. And we know that once we start to really work on ourselves, you know, we pray, we seek God, going within with the meditation, what happens to the energy field that emanates from us? You know, that beautiful light around us, it grows even brighter and more shining. And of course, we understand that when we, especially let's say we get into mediumship, everyone wants to be a medium. Well, one of the laws is like attracts like. This is a law in a general sense anyway. So you start to work on yourself spiritually, you're going to attract those on a higher vibration. They want to influence you. This is the truth. And that power of the Spirit that worked through Master Jesus, that works through any one of us, anybody anywhere, who sincerely desires to serve the Spirit, what do you think motivates all these guardians in the world of the Spirit? Love motivates them. Now I'll tell you, there's this idea that you go into the Spirit world and you wear a white gown and you float around like you're in a hospital or something. <laughs> you know, I guess I'm going to go there, everything's okay. But I'll tell you this, you go over there, you have to evaluate the situation for what it is. Many times the people who are around you, on the subtle level, they're not necessarily more advanced than you are. In fact, a lot of them are even in a lesser vibration than you. And why do you think that they're around you? It's not just because they want to help you, because in a lot of cases, let's face it, if, you, if you're messed up over there, 
There's not a lot that you can do in terms of providing support for someone here. But in many cases, and I see this all the time when I'm doing sessions, many times the personalities around somebody are actually learning from that personality. They are totally aware of what's going on in your life. And you may be dealing with certain types of situations that maybe when they were here, maybe when they were embodied in this physical they literally messed up completely. And just by observing how you handle things, it's part of their own growth process. We help those in the world of the spirit through our actions. And you know, we, in many religions, you know, there's the idea of praying for others who passed over. And we can see that those thoughts that we send out, the love that we allow to be projected from our heart centers in the center of our chest, when we're sending out that love, it touches those around you within your own physical premises. But it also touches those who've passed over to the world of the spirit. They know what's going on in your life. Sometimes people ask, oh my gosh, you know, I'm in the shower. Are they watching me? Well, they might be, so watch out. <laughs> but they... They want to help you. They want to encourage you. So we want to be more involved in terms of our own growth. This is what's really important. It's not like it's in some far off type of place. Now this particular church, it's very good. You've got a lot of very good things going here that you don't necessarily find in other places. I mean this in a nice way. And when you gather you a group of people like this, what happens? You have a collective energy. And we raise the energy up, you know, we sing. Two or more are gathered in the name of the divine. That presence, that higher consciousness is going to be there. And those in the world of the spirit, they need people to do the work. It does, it's not like you have to go off and cast a day, go buy a house across the street from the camp and start doing readings. Does anyone want to do that here? You know, you end up having your own cable TV show and mediumship, all these things. It's not what it's necessarily about. It's about whatever you are doing in your own physical plane life, whether in a professional sense or even on a personal level. If you start to open up to the greater power of the spirit, it's going to work through you. And the personalities will be attracted to working through you. Now, we have our defects. It's just like we had the pastor's reading. You know, we, 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 we were aware of our faults. Well, just the fact that we're aware of our faults says something. Because once we begin to begin to be aware of what we need to do, God has not forgotten you. God will put in your life the people. God will place in your situation the resources to work through whatever those lessons are. Those lessons, those hardships may not necessarily be taken away. You know, oh, please, God, remove it all. But then we don't necessarily gain the strength, do we? We don't necessarily go within and actually seek that kingdom of God. Because we focus on the external so often. And that external is true, truly there. But the higher reality, you know, we, we identify with these bodies, but none of us are these bodies. Every single molecule and cell changes within se seven years. And yet the consciousness, the personality of who we are continues. So I'm going to encourage you. I mean, this is, I, I, mean, I heard good things about this place. I've known this guy since he was so little. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's like about 25 people here. Well, I'll tell you this. If you've got friends or families, I don't care what their religious persuasion are. Bring them here. Twist their arm. Manipulate them to come. Because when they come here and participate, they're going to be touched, not necessarily through the, 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 the inspirational talk, so to speak, not necessarily even through the healing with the hands-on or even the mediumship that takes place. They're just by sitting here, there's the higher vibration. And you, know, you can come in here totally discordant, and then the angel world will touch you and you will leave, not necessarily with the solutions, but with more of an inner peace and awareness. And we are our sisters and our brothers' keepers. So when we try to bring other people into this, it only, it's something which just increases God's hands in terms of being able to reach through to others. So may God bless each and every one of you.